Got it. There it is. Awesome. Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony Campolo. Thank you, uh, not Jonathan, for that intro. Uh, yeah, so I am someone who does a lot of advocacy for a lot of different things. I'm on the Redwood team, and I also work for QuickNode, and I just really enjoy open source, front-end, web dev kind of stuff. I think it's just like really fascinating, and um, I'm going to be talking about a somewhat newer, more cutting-edge JavaScript framework you know there's always this question like framework library like what are we talking about here it's solid you can think of as being similar to react if you know anything about react then solid won't be too hard for you to understand at first there's some weird gotchas that you'll encounter between the two but the gotchas are because they look so similar people expect them to behave identically and then they don't but for the vast majority of use cases when you dive into it it's gonna make a lot of sense so I'm going to share my screen so I can kind of start showing some links and whatnot for people. Um, it says host has disabled participant screen sharing. Well, let me check the settings real quick to see if I can change that. And then while he's doing that, I'm going to drop some links in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That looks good. Okay. So I just dropped Brian Carniato's link into the chat here. So Brian Car Carniato is the creator of Solid and really tell the story of Solid. You can actually tell the story of Brian as well. He currently works at Netlify with Nick, who is hanging out here with us. And he was hired by Netlify to really help push Solid forward. This is one of the reasons why I think right now is a really great time to invest in Solid and start to learn about Solid because I think it's going to get a lot more kind of support and just like general, you know, like the ability to just work on something consistently and give it the attention and care that like a large open source project needs. Because if you think about it, this is going to compete with something like React. React has a whole team and Facebook behind it. And to kind of have something similar, you really need to put a lot of time and effort into it. And then here is the Twitter, solid underscore JS. And then the site is solidjs.com. But what I'll be doing is I'll mostly just be going through um, this little script here. Um, let's see if I can do chat. There we go, bam. So if you're watching this video in the future, this will probably not be here because this thing is going to be turned into a blog post and an eventual course. But for people hanging around right now, this is a little readme. That's just going to be what we're going to do today. And I'm going to build up a solid project totally from scratch. So we're going to start with just a blank directory, install some dependencies, and get going. The idea being that you can kind of see what it would look like to actually create one of these projects just from the ground up. And it should be fairly comprehensible. And this is me having already built this a second ago to make sure it worked. Okay. Now, this is a whole bunch of dependencies I'm going to install here. The reason why there's so many is because I'm also bundling in uh, like our deployment dependencies and stuff like that. So while that's going, let me just kind of talk this out here. The most important thing here is the SolidJS dependency. Just like if you were to install React, you install React and then React DOM. There is no React DOM equivalent here. There's just solid. You also then have solid meta, which is for like meta tags, similar to like React Helmet, and then solid router as well. Now, this is one of the things that you'll discover when you learn React is React by itself doesn't really do a whole lot. You usually gotta bring in extra libraries like React Router. And then if you want to have like a full framework kind of experience, then you will use something maybe like Next.js. Now Solid has a Next.js equivalent they're creating now called Solid Start. And um, by the way, as I'm going, if anything 
people have questions or clarification or they have no idea like what next JS or, or things like that are, please just like stop me and ask questions. Totally happy to talk through any of this stuff if anything I'm saying does not make sense. But the idea being that you have solid and then have a larger framework built around it called solid start. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm just gonna show solid by itself. And then I'll eventually get into like the kind of solid meta framework, which is solid start. And then we have things that will let us like deploy it to things like Vercel and Netlify, because one of the things that I think makes these frameworks really nice is they have great integration with deployment platforms. So it's not just a way to like build a website, it's a way to get that website on the internet very, very easily. So that's a really important step of the process a lot of times you don't really think about it until we get to the end. They're like, okay, we have this thing and it's on my computer and it works, but like, how do I make it a website? <laughs> and so that is what's going to be included in this little presentation as well. Okay, let's actually look at the package JSON now. We're going to add a couple of scripts here. Um, are people here familiar with Vite at all? Because that might be something that might want to spend a little bit of time describing just kind of pulse of the audience. Have people heard of Vite? Have they used Vite? Do they know what Vite is? I don't know how well you can see the uh, cameras, Anthony, when you're uh, sharing your screen, but there were a few uh, heads shaking no. Shaking no. All right, cool. Great. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Glad I asked then. So, do people know what um, Webpack is? Is that a, a more familiar one? Let's see, Webpack, yes. Okay, cool. So for people who have done, let me actually do, I you have this little chat over here. Uh, so for people who have ever done web dev with React, you may have used something called Create React App. And Create React App is bundling React and a tool called Webpack together into one thing. And so the point of Webpack is to, when you actually like write your project, you're going to have different files. You're going to have like your index.html and you're going to have um, your, someone's sound is on right now. But, so you're going to have, um, a bunch of different files that need to get bundled together. It's like what your site actually is. And you use, you use a tool like Webpack to basically turn those files into something that actually makes sense to the browser. So this is why when you're using things like Netlify or Vercel, you'll have what's called like a build step. Will there be a step where they'll actually like take your whole project, run it through some transformation, and then that'll spit out the code that actually is the website itself. So Vite is just like a newer, cooler way to do this. It's a lot faster because it uses Go under the hood. And it's kind of where most of these frameworks are going towards in terms of like the underlying build tooling. Now, you wouldn't necessarily need to know or care that Vite is involved here at all if you just have the project set up for you because then you'll have these like scripts and you'll run PMPM run dev or yarn dev or PMPM or NPM run dev. And these things will get your project running and it'll do the build step and it'll run your local host and it'll do all that stuff for you. And what's happening is V is under the hood. So it's a step that's kind of important to know if you're like a framework author, <laughs> but if you're just kind of using these tools, you can usually transition from projects that use like Webpack to projects that use V fairly seamlessly as long as it was kind of set up correctly in the first place. And then the other thing that's important here is you want to set type to module, which is just a thing with ESM and, and CGS and all that. Now, there's going to be a Vite config file. And for this, this is just because Vite is something that works for many different types of frameworks. So if we were doing React instead of Solid, then we would have a React plugin here instead of a Solid plugin. But this is like the sum total of config we need to do. Back in the Webpack days, you would have these config files that are like hundreds or even like thousands of lines long. So if like <laughs> you're worried about the amount of config involved here, this is like as minimal no config as you can almost possibly get. 
So that's like really nice for people who have been used to these kind of like super config heavy Babel webpack kind of projects. Then a similar thing you would have to a React project is you'll have an index.html and this is going to bring in a script with our root component. So this is just like a shell that we are then loading in our JavaScript files. And then the JavaScript files is what's going to contain the sum total of our website. And we're just going to create a SRC folder. And in that SRC folder, we're going to have a root.jsx file. And so this is going to be what we're actually going to see on the screen when we render our app. We're going to see a little component here. That component has a header with an H1 in it. And then a link, a link which goes to the solid JS website. Then we have a render function here, and it's taking the root element, which is here, and injecting this app component. And we don't even need any other files. We can just have this one single file with this one app component, and we render that app component and then import it onto our index.html page. So that is the whole solid hello world right there. We then run pmpm PM run dev to see our project here. And so now this is our page right now. So if we were to edit this at all to say first like solid see that added over here. And then, yeah, as Nick is saying, V is French for fast. Okay, um, questions about what I've shown so far? Okay, I'll take that as what I've shown so far it makes sense and people are hopefully not confused. This is a similar setup to, for cool too, if you did like a Create React app, it would create a bunch of files for you that would set up a project in a fairly similar order to this, but usually there'll be more files. There won't just be like, your, you don't want your whole thing in this like one file because that's going to be kind of ridiculous. As we build this out, we're going to want to split it up to different files so we have more modular, more sensible project structure. So let's start doing that now. Let's see how we actually create some components. So root and app are the same file. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what I'm going to show right now is I'm going to break this up into in a more sensible structure. And if you look at the kind of like solid templates that are available, it won't look exactly like this. But the reason why I've kind of chosen this specific project structure and naming structures as going to mirror solid start. So it'll allow us to do like a seamless migration from this into solid start in a way that I think will help it kind of make sense, the, the differences between those two. So now we have a routes folder and we're gonna have a single route here. And this route is going to then have our app. So we're gonna pull that app out of the root file. And then we're also going to add in some CSS here. And this will be some CSS that I'll kind of mimic, create React app as well. If you pull out this example from the solid template, it even has the little spinning, floating <laughs> solid logo as well in reference to React's iconic spinning logo. Okay, so now we see here, instead of having the app and the render function in the same file, we just have the render function here and we're importing the app from our index over here. And then now it should be all good. And here we see now we have the exact same thing, but now with some CSS that makes it look a little nicer. So now we have some components, but we want to have, or so now we have, um, we have routes, we have pages. So this kind of, you can kind of think of this as like our, our page here. Now we want to actually have components though. So a component would be some sort of self-contained functionality. In this case, the ever important counter. You can't count things on your site. Is it even a real website? Probably not. Okay, so now we're gonna have counter component. And this is where we start to get into what makes solid solid and what makes it different from React. Now, if you were to look at React, you would see that 
you would have a use state here instead of a create signal. And this is where Ryan's influence from something like knockout comes into play because there's something happening here called reactivity. And reactivity, it's a kind of esoteric academic <laughs> concepts to a certain extent, but in a simple manner, it just means you have something on the page that changes. And when it changes, you want your thing to update. So in this sense, we're gonna have a counter and this counter is going to just count up one every 1000 milliseconds. So every second it's gonna go up one and then that's the, the whole deal. And we wanna display the count here in our component. So we would do a use signal in React, but here we do a we do a use state in React, but here we do a create signal. And what this is going to do is do exactly what you would do with a use state. It allows you to have a state, starts at zero, and then it counts up bit by bit. And then since we have this component now, we need to import our component into our index route over here. So now we're importing our component from our counter file in our components folder, and we're displaying it here right under this. And so now we're going to do that. There's our counter, which is now counting up. So one of the things that is really interesting kind of historically about Solid is that Solid was originally created four or five years ago and looked exactly like this, exactly what you're seeing. And React at the time was using class components and they had this kind of stuff baked into it and it worked under the hood in some ways similar to Solid, but in some ways it was very different. So it also had like the virtual DOM, but once they went to hooks, they ended up shifting to something that looked almost exactly like Solid. And so some people think Solid came out and was like influenced by React and React hooks, but that's actually not the case at all. Solid was already doing this and then React arrived at a similar solution after the fact. <laughs> so I find that to be really fascinating and it shows kind of how Ryan was like strangely ahead of the curve in ways that just like you can never really predict or, or anticipate. All right, now... We're going to make a slight tweak here to our counter and we're going to add in now an effect. So this is one of the things that <clears throat> React is like notorious for is that they have this use effect hook. And so the use effect hook confuses people a lot. <laughs> and this is a way to have an effect it's quite a bit simpler. We have still a create signal here with a count and then we're just going to have this create effect here and then it's going to count. That's it. That's the entire effect. And then we're going to have an on click handler that's going to then set count. And when we click it, it's going to run count. You saw it does not life cycles. And you can write direct jobs without having to worry about breaking any life cycles. If I do bouncers and handlers. Yeah. So this is what makes solid kind of a lot simpler under the hood is that it doesn't have a virtual DOM at all. So I think that, that that basically means that so so it has the equivalent it has like on mount and things like that but that's going to be for like the on mount so it's a little bit more similar to uh svelte in that respect so they both have an on mount handler we're going to get into that once we show kind of like the api calls so i think there are still the concept of life cycles but they're uh slightly different than how React handles them. Let's see, it's a great episode of JavaScript Jabber. React talked about how it's coincidence and looking as well. Yeah, and this is, um, Dave is, is pointing out that Ryan is a prolific podcast guest. And I would be remiss not to real quickly plug my own podcast interview with Ryan that I had a really great time. And this was one of the first times I really learned a lot about this framework and it kind of blew my mind. So yeah, so James, as I was saying, there there are life cycles, but they're they're different from Reacts, and I don't think they're necessarily baked into the effects handlers as much. This is a, a kind of lower level part of the implementation that I'm still not super familiar with because I'm kind of like still learning the the framework. But uh, yeah, if you're curious to learn more about that. Ryan is extremely active on the Twitters and like answer literally, literally anyone's question who throws questions at him. 
okay so where i was at was with this uh create effect and now we're going to have an actual button that's going to be able to be clicked and then when we do that click it will run the effect and the effect will increment the counter so that is that now we're going to show how to make an a uh, third party api call sure. yeah that's um question for the host the uh, I'm assuming the recording will be shared somewhere. We'll let you know where in a little bit, I'm sure. Okay. Um, now this is going to be our users component. And we're going to have again, a uh, create signal. This time instead of loading it with a zero, it's gonna be this uh, just empty array. And then we're gonna run a fetch. So just like a regular fetch call. And then we're gonna hit the JSON placeholder API. If anyone hasn't seen this before, it's a really nice mock API service that just returns some JSON, JSON data for you. And there's been shared the, the link to React Dallas's channel. And we see here, we could change the limit if we wanted 10. Right now, I'm just gonna pull out five of them. And all I'm gonna be doing is displaying the name of each of these users. So we're gonna run the fetch. We then get the response. We run set users and then await the response and then grab the JSON out of it. Now here we have this for component. This is a specific solidism and it's a way to loop over an array of objects. So it's similar to uh, like a you know for each or a map or any of these kind of ways that we loop over data that we get back from uh, APIs when we grab this JSON. And then we're gonna show each user and we're gonna display the user's name. And that's all we're gonna do with that. And then there'll be a fallback for a loading if it's loading. Yeah, yeah, the fallback prop is, is really nice. This is something that I'm always big on with uh, Redwood cells. They have the ability to have a success, an error, a loading, and an empty state. And it can kind of figure all those out automatically. So I try and bake that into whenever I'm working with other people's projects. Oh, I forgot one thing. I'm not importing the user into my component here. Do that. There we go. Now we see we're displaying the five users here. We were to change that over here to 10. So you get 10 users instead of five. Okay, so this is kind of like your pretty baseline, like hello world functionality to most frameworks I think of. I think in this case, you have components. Those components need to have state. They need to be able to run effects. And they need to be able to call out to third-party APIs. Once you've kind of done all that, that's usually the, the baseline kind of functionality you, you want to have. And then for routing to different pages, that's where salt start is going to come in. But before we do that, we can see how to deploy what we've got here. So I'm going to just initialize a Git repository here. I'm going to commit. And then I'm going to use the GitHub CLI here to deploy this whole thing. If it was not using the GitHub CLI, I highly recommend it. You can have this like one Uber command that will create a repo and then write a description, set it to public, push it, grab the source and set the remote all in one go. Someone has a TV on in the, in the background. And tonight with the woman and her mother and the family dog, the water is rising so fast in their home. They went yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay, and then we create Netlify.toml here. And what Netlify.toml does is lets us specify the build commands for our project. So we're going to have a build command and then we're going to have a publish directory. So if we were to see if we just run, uh, I'm using pmpm, but npm and yarn would work just as well. It creates this dist. So this is what I was talking about back when I was saying we have like Webpack that actually creates the project. This is what actually bundles up our application 
into this huge incomprehensible blob of JavaScript and then this huge single line of CSS. And this is, you know, it's necessary because this is what is the most opti optimal way of deploying something because you want it all be in a single file. So you're only making a single network request, but it um, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if you try and just look at it. This is where you kind of just like do a little prayer to the, the build tooling gods and just hope that it works. But it tends to actually work, surprisingly enough. And now we got all that. We'll this. Uh, and I'm going to use the Netlify CLI here. I used to not use this. So it always kind of would do weird things. So I've started using it recently. It seems to work most of the time. So let's go. Okay, give it a name. You just see quick have solid Dallas. I've already included these, so this is just pulling these commands from our netlify.toml. And then it's going to give us an actual link after it finishes building. So that's gonna take a second to build. While that builds, I'm gonna do a trick and deploy it somewhere else at the exact same time. So what this is gonna do is this is now gonna deploy this to Vercel. And this is one of the reasons that I really like these frameworks and how nicely integrated they are with deployment platforms. Because you can just kind of run a couple commands with the CLIs here and it puts you in a position where the entire thing gets built, gets pushed up to the thing. And then it's now synced also to our GitHub repo. So if we were to make changes and do something different, then it'll say, hey, there's a change. I need to rebuild the site and then push that new site back up. So let's see if Netlify is done yet. Okay, so here's our site now living on Netlify. Go ahead and share these in chat. There's that. And then here will be that. And then the GitHub these are coming from will be github.com agency web dev agency web dev solid Dallas. Bam. Okay. Cool. So it's following along at home. Great. So now we got our site on <laughs> the counter works. It's production ready. Right? That's right. It is cool. So um questions for any of that that I've shown so far. Or just comments or thoughts or general pontifications on the status of what you think of solid now. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. So does solid react, does solid interact with other libraries in the same way that React would? Like if I wanted to use Redux for my state management or something like that, would solid basically handle it the same way? Or are there like some libraries that it does not integrate with? Yeah, so this is a good question because Solid itself is built on JSX. So that's why it looks the same as React and it behaves fairly similarly. And you would expect it to work with the same kind of dependencies that React works with, but for the most part, it's not really the case. So if you're going to use React or if you're going to use Solid, like for Redux, you don't need Redux because it has state management built into it. It has this concept called stores. So you don't need that. But if you want to use like say styled components, like if you want to use uh, some sort of CSS and JS solution, that is stuff where it's going to get a little wonky and you may need to look if there's like already a solid community plugin for it. Now there is like a pretty vibrant solid community, especially within the last year since I first started kind of following it. That's like really grown and really got to be pretty massive. So there is stuff available to do the vast majority of things you would want to do. You may need to look for like the solid equivalent of it, but you'll probably be able to find it. And this is one of the things like React has just gotten to be so monolithic and like everyone knows it and everyone has these like set of dependencies they expect that most people will like find a way to build it in. So yeah, like as Nick is saying here, there's already a version of React query for a solid. So like actually React query became tan stack query because they don't want to be React specific anymore. So I don't even remember what I was talking about, but let's let's get back to 
back to this. Okay. So um, next thing I was going to show is a uh, solid start. So solid start is now where you get like a router built in and you get multiple pages and you also get things like server side rendering, which is like server side rendering is one of those things you hopefully will never have to set up yourself. You'll always have a framework that can do it for you. <laughs> and yeah, totally. So one of the things that makes these frameworks even nicer now than they used to be a couple of years ago is now they include SSR and explaining why SSR is important is like a very large subject, kind of like orthogonal to what I'm showing here. But the point is it lets you do more stuff on the server, which allows you to do less on the client. And the reason why you want to do less on the client is because people may have slower devices. They may be on less adequate networks than we're used to, and they may have trouble downloading these huge bundles of JavaScript. So by doing more on the server and then shipping just a little bit of JavaScript to the client, it allows us to make websites that are friendlier to a larger swath of people all over the world. And this is like a very important thing. It's a huge trend in the industry and it's very great to see. And this is something that a lot of these frameworks are now kind of helping contribute. And we're going to just change a couple things here to make our thing compatible with solid start. We had to change out our scripts. So now instead of the V scripts, we're running solid start scripts. Now this is a little bit <laughs> of a bait and switch because V is being used here, but V is now inside of solid start. So we're running solid start, solid start is running V. So, you know, we're kind of just swapping one thing for another, but it's really not that different, all things considered. We're then going to make a couple changes here. We're not going to remove the solid plugin and include now the solid from solid start plugin. And now we have the solid plugin instead of the solid plugin plugin. So I'm sure that makes perfect sense. So don't even worry about that. <laughs> and if you ever used Remix, what you're going to see here is going to be extremely familiar. If you've never used Remix or React Server Components, then this will look a little strange. But this is mostly boilerplate that you don't have to worry too much about. The important thing to know here is that you have a client file and you have a server file. And the client file is going to mount our root component here. And then our server is going to create a, a handler, which is basically like a Lambda handler or in this uh, context is going to be running on edge handler, but basically it just means it's going to be compatible with whatever deployment platform you deploy to is going to work with their kind of background server setup, which can involve serverless functions or edge functions. And if you don't know what those are, that's again, it's kind of another whole separate long topic, but it basically means it's a server that is running that you don't have to load an operating system on and manage and like deal with the entire server. It's just a server that you can kind of hand your code to and say, hey, you're a server, run this code for me, please. And they'll say, hey, I'm a server, I'm gonna run this code for you. Here's the response. And that's all it really needs to do. Then here, this is all the solid start isms where we're going to have uh, routes. We have our routes. We have suspense, which allows it to be asynchronous. We have an error boundary. This is all kind of jargon that is not super duper important. From a dev's perspective, the main thing you need to actually know and be aware of is that you need to have a routes folder. And then these routes are going to define what our routes are by the name of the file. So the index route is going to be just our home page. So I set this project up, as I was saying, in a way where now I can just run this command and our project will be on different local hosts. It'll be on 3000 now. It'll be exactly the same. Like the project has not changed at all. We did not need to change the routes file. We did not need to change the components file. All we had to do was add in these entry files and then change our route and everything else works. And this is going to be extremely useful for people who need to migrate their solid projects to solid start because right now solid start is beta it's not really production ready yet but it's going to be production ready in i would guess sometime in 2023 like that gives them enough leeway to make it no, we'll see all right and the only other thing we're going to add here is going to be a to do route 
And this is going to be a whole bunch of code that I don't think I'll necessarily have enough time to completely walk through the entire thing. But just to give you a taste of what's happening here, we have a to-do component. And this to-do component is going to be running a couple functions so we can add to-dos. We can toggle the to-do as done or not done. And then we can remove the to-do once it's completed. And then we have a couple things here. We're going to have the ability to add to-dos and remove to-dos. And these are using solid starts particular methods. So you have the uh, create server multi-actions and these are kind of like solid start specific methods and this is the stuff that's kind of taking influence from remix and the idea being that this can all be compiled away and will still work with just pure html and that's like a very enticing thing because it allows better progressive um, progressive enhancement and just the ability to kind of bring us back to more of a paradigm of like multi-page applications and things not necessarily need to rely so heavily on JavaScript. And then we're just doing some logic here to filter the list. And then we're going to have an input, which will have a form, and then that will take in the, uh, the to-do. And then we're going to display the to do here. And then we have like all this logic here for, for toggling. So if people are interested in more of this, um, I'll point you to the actual uh, a solid JS template for, let's see, I think this is on solid start. So you can find most of the stuff um, I just kind of pulled and reworked from their official official repository. So here, this is very similar as the to do MVC example from here. So this will be a good place to look if you want to kind of dig into more of what's happening here in the actual to do example. But for now, I kind of wanted to just show how to migrate the project and then actually how to get online. But let's first make sure this to do thing can actually hold some to do's. Now, this is the kind of quote unquote database. There is no database here. This data is not actually being persisted anywhere. So when you write these to do's, if you refresh the page, the to do's go away. This is, this is you know, not, not an actual full stack example, but for the sake of this example, it's just going to create a counter and it's going to create some to do's and it's going to allow you to throw some to do's onto this. And so this is kind of like our mock backend. And I'm going to grab this whole giant chunk of CSS. I'm not a CSS whiz, and this CSS for the to do's kind of breaks the CSS for the front end. And that's a, a project for me to figure out on another day. But right now, let's go ahead and run this. So you so see here, the CSS changed a little bit. But now we can see our to do's. So we have to do's. I don't know if this is necessarily accessible or not. Might need to open a PR for that, but if we create um, a to-do here saying, give a meetup talk and hit enter. And we now have our single to-do here. We can then mark it done and we can leave an R list if we want, or we can delete it. And we can create a couple, do one, do two, and it'll stack up. Yeah, kind of several accessibility violations here. Yeah, yeah. So this is why I know we're still still in beta and the accessibility things are always uh, one of the things that need to be figured out at some point. So welcome to any notes there. I'm actually, as I say, going to be turning this into a course at some point. So accessibility concerns of single page applications is always a topic unto itself. Uh, to get this to then deploy, we are going to use an adapter. So Solids has specific adapters for different deployment platforms. So we're gonna bring in the Solid Start Netlify, and we only need to make a slight change to our netlify.toml. And we're gonna change the publish directory to now Netlify. And then we're gonna make a slight change to our vconfig. 
And now we're bringing in Netlify from the solid start Netlify and then deploying that here and setting it to edge. So this means, I'm assuming that it's going to be using the Dino edge functions kind of under the hood. And I think that will be all I need to do to get this working. So we open that and then that'll take a second to build. Yeah, should be able to see this. All right, cool. I get to show a Netlify employee something new on Netlify. Any questions while that is building out? Looks like this is building right now. So we see here, we have our edge functions bundling, building out our index page. And then that looks like everything. So if we go back to this one, this should now have to-dos. My site to apply. And then now this is working on our actual deployed site. Thanks, Jonathan. So uh, <laughs> yeah, quick question. Well, maybe it's not quick, but uh, so one thing I noticed with React is <clears throat> there are side effects. Um, for example, if you perform an action to make an asynchronous call and you do something like navigate away from the view that you're on that unmounts the component and then the asynchronous call didn't complete yet, uh, it'll print out like a memory leak error and, or warning in the console log. So I'm curious if, uh, so like you have to set up, um, like uh, you could either use like Axios signal, abort signal uh, to handle that, or you could use like a is mounted pattern. But I'm curious if like uh, solid, since it kind of handles life cycles differently, if it has similar side effects to worry about. Yeah, so that would be with the with the on mount would be a similar thing. So if you want to like run an effect when the component mounts, then you would do that. And I would imagine it would still handle some of the same things. I think that with solid, the the mounting behavior is less of kind of the draw. The the behavior that it has that's different is the re-rendering. So this is a common thing with React that you have these components that will need to re-render to like update the state. And so you'll have like this thing where you end up need to like use callbacks and use memo and you have all these other hooks that are built in to kind of handle the re-rendering of the components. And that is where Solid is able to have more fine-grained reactivity. This is a the term that Ryan uses all the time. I'm not sure I fully understand it, but what he means is that you have just a, it just renders once. And then when it needs to update, the part that needs to update will update. And it doesn't need to tear down the entire component and build it back up every single time. It's able to just take the thing that needs to change and make that change. So in terms of like the life cycles and the mounting, all that stuff, I'm not sure if there's really anything interesting going on there, but it's the re-render pattern that removes the need for things like use memo and use callback. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Any other questions? Be curious, Nick, if you had any, any thoughts of what we've shown here, since I was showing a little bit of Netlify functionality, I don't know if you're able to talk yet. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I can talk. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, the edge edge deploy worked as expected, but uh, yeah, no, it's uh it's, I haven't really messed around with Solid yet. It's still on my to-do. I'm going to a meetup actually next week in Montreal, but um, yeah, I think it's neat. Well, it's, it's due to the reactivity, but how like it only renders the component once unless you trash the component. So like they're on in, like all that markup never changes. And that, that probably helps with the server side story too. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, you know, in terms of like hydration and stuff. I, I, I'm not positive of the hydration story. I know it's different than React because like other frameworks like Fresh and stuff, they just take a completely different approach. They don't, they don't compare the markup. They just say, here's the interactive bits and run it. So like you wouldn't end up with issues. Like I'm starting to notice issues with React 18 and hydration. Like 
even like like a web uh, a web browser extension breaks hydration in React because it injects stuff into the DOM and stuff. So it's uh, it's interesting that the newer frameworks are doing a different approach in terms of hydration. Yeah, I shared a, a link from um, there's if you go to stlejs.com forward slash guides forward slash server, you can find some information about hydration here. But this is the way you would do it now if you're just using solid JS. This is not like if you were using solid start. So I don't really know what the story with hydration will be with solid start because solid start is kind of emulating remix to a certain extent. And remix went a different direction, doesn't really rely on partial hydration at all. So I'd be curious kind of where Ryan's head is at with that because like there's a lot happening in the hydration space in terms of things like Astro and now we have this kind of like quick model which is not really hydration it's like this resumability thing so there's a what we do with our JavaScript and how we make our JavaScript more manageable is kind of like multifaceted project pro problem that a lot of different projects are approaching in different ways Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, there's a ton of frameworks like quick is another one. These are all like really new frameworks, but they're, they're handling hydration and in a different way as well. So, or, and they're not even calling it that they're calling it resumability, but that's a whole, exactly, I don't, yeah. I don't want, I don't want to derail, I don't want to derail this meetup. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like as, as someone who probably works on now a platform that needs to support all these frameworks, it's a dizzy array of things to keep up with, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I do sleep though good sleep's important cool yeah um so yes yeah, so that was the the whole demo um yeah hopefully that kind of gives people a little bit idea of like what solid is how they would kind of get started with it if they were to use it themselves i think that you know right now solid itself is like it's been around for a while it's like very battle tested i would feel like very comfortable kind of putting it into production solid start is still basically in the works like it's considered beta and <laughs> and if you want to put solid start in production i would uh hesitate to recommend people do that right now i would say you're going to probably be testing it out and seeing how it works and then filing bug reports for the benefit of the project if that's something you want to look into but like solid itself if you want to look into like a replacement for react or maybe you're using like svelte or you're using some sort of front end you know, component framework and you want to try something else, like I would say, give solid a try. You might be surprised kind of like what it's capable of doing today. And then keep an eye on things like solid start and how that's going to start playing into their whole edge story. Cause a lot of frameworks are going in this direction. And I think that, you know, some people will stick with react and react will build in some of these same features. And then other people will kind of jump ship to other frameworks but for the most part there's like a lot of interesting things happening across these frameworks and a lot of innovation and cool things happening and just new ways of thinking about how to create these applications that will make them more performant and more available to a, a larger wider array of people who maybe can't handle downloading megabytes of javascript onto their phone Awesome. Well, thank you again, Anthony. That's really cool. Uh, it, it's so neat to learn about new technologies and stuff like that, and especially something that has like all these different, uh, these really cool uh, attributes, like what you're talking about. Uh, and so this will be really exciting to see how it grows and changes over the next uh, couple of years. Uh, once again, everybody, feel free to share like your LinkedIn or Twitter or other information. I also am going to go ahead and repost those links from earlier, uh, including my LinkedIn at the bottom there. Again, Scott Thompson, not Jonathan Martinez, <laughs> just to try to avoid any kind of uh, confusion there. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for your time. Uh, really appreciate it. Hope that y'all will continue to come to our meetups. Um, we have these every month. Uh, it's always the last Thursday of the month, and we for the last couple of months also been having in person so if you live in the dfw area or close to it feel free to come to that um i think it's not this upcoming sunday but the sunday after that and of course our cohorts are about to start back up next thursday as well 
starting and ending with a virtual uh, meetup. So more of that information will be uh, thrown into Discord on the LinkedIn on the Facebook page. Um, we'll be sure to clip that one part of. Oh wait, let me <laughs> let me stop recording. On that note.